Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive interstellar rift tutorial. Over the course of the series, we'll cover everything from the very basics to fully automating your ship and more. This video is all about the basics, your character, inventory, and the most fundamental of Interstellar Rift's mechanics. Like most first-person games, you move by using W, A, S, and D, and look around using your mouse. You can sprint by holding Shift, or you can take it slow and walk around by holding Z. The spacebar allows you to jump, and if you find yourself in the dark, press F to light up your flashlight. At the bottom of the screen, you can see your player's health in red, and your suit's oxygen tank in blue. Whenever you enter an area without sufficient oxygen present, you will switch over to your suit's oxygen, and when you return to a breathable environment, the tank will refill itself. If your oxygen reaches zero, you will start to take damage. You can recover health with health packs, which are consumed by holding the left mouse button while selected. We'll go over how to get health packs and other hazards to your health in later videos. If you press Tab, you can bring up your General Remote Induction Processor, or GRIP for short. Later in the series will be a more in-depth exploration of all the GRIP's functions, but in short, it serves as your Space Age smartphone. Importantly, take note of the Menu button at the bottom of the GRIP screen. This will bring up the Game Menu, from where you can leave your game, review or change game options, or respawn your character. The game menu can also be accessed quickly by pressing the escape key. Let's take a look at how to interact with in-game screens. All screens, including the grip, can be clicked using the left mouse button. Just simply look at the button on the screen you want and click it. You can also hold left alt to unlock your mouse cursor and click on buttons that way. Whether you use alt when using screens is completely down to personal preference. If you want to go back to a previous menu on a screen, you can use the icons in the top left of the display, or press backspace to go back one menu at a time. The teleporter is crucially important to the game, as this is the main way of traveling from one ship or station to another. In front of me is a long-range teleporter, which can reach ships up to 12.5 kilometers away. There's also a short-range version, which is smaller and cheaper to build, but only has a range of two and a half kilometers. In order to teleport, you need a teleporter to start at, as well as a destination teleporter. When it comes to range, only the teleporter you start from matters. So, for example, you can teleport from a long range to a short range teleporter without issue, but teleporting from a short range to a long range teleporter is limited to two and a half kilometers. If you are teleporting from a long range to a short range teleporter which is farther than two and a half kilometers away, you will be given a warning that you won't be able to use the same teleporter to get back, unless the two ships move closer together. To use the teleporter, first approach the screen. The lower screen shows a list of all ships and stations that are currently in range, and includes an option to select the ship you're currently on as well. Choose the ship from the list you would like to teleport to. This will bring you to another list, this time showing all available teleporters on your destination ship. Clicking on the destination teleporter will also show you what type, either long or short range, that teleporter is. You may also notice that the upper screen now displays a top-down map of the area surrounding the currently selected teleporter. Clicking and dragging the map will pan it around, and the floor up and floor down buttons can be used to change the map's focus to a different floor on the ship. You can also use the next teleporter and previous teleporter buttons to jump to other teleporters on the destination ship, if there are any. Once you're ready to teleport, press the teleport button on either of the two screens to begin the countdown. Walk onto the circular pad in the center of the teleporter, and in a few seconds you'll be instantly taken to your destination. If you plan to play on multiplayer in any capacity, it's important to understand how to properly use the chat system. First. Press enter to begin typing in the chat. Now, take a look at the tabs at the top of the chat box. The everything tab, as the name implies, contains messages from all the other tabs in one place. The server tab has messages from the server itself, such as notifications about players joining or information showing when the game is saving. 
The All tab is used for talking to every player currently on the server. You can send messages to this channel by typing forward slash all or forward slash a, and while the tab is selected, the forward slash all command will autofill, letting you type your message immediately. The Ship tab is used for messaging all players currently on the same ship or station as you. To send messages here, simply type in the chat without any command in front. This is considered the default chat channel. The Fleet and Crew tabs are useful if you're currently in a fleet or a crew on that server, which we'll cover more in depth in a later video. Just like the All channel, you can send messages to these two channels either by typing the forward slash fleet and forward slash crew commands, or by switching over to that tab and having the command autofill for you. Pressing the arrow next to the Crew tab will show us the final Whisper tab. This channel is used for talking directly to another player, without anyone else seeing what you're saying. To send messages here, you can use the forward slash whisper or forward slash w commands, or choose the tab and have the command autofill, followed by the name of the player you'd like to talk to, and then the message you'd like to send them. You've also no doubt noticed that the channel a message comes from is labeled in square brackets in front of the message. Now, let's go over Interstellar Rift's inventory, tool, and cargo system. In this game, there are two different inventory types. The resource inventory and the tool inventory. We'll start with the resource inventory. At the top of the screen, you can see the resources your character is currently carrying. There are 10 slots, and each slot can hold a single stack of resources. The amount of resources that can fit in a single stack will vary depending on what resource it is, but the most common size is 600 units. Resources can be stored on ships or stations using cargo pads. A full-size cargo pad can hold 8 crates of resources. To pick up items from a cargo pad, press E while looking at the item. You can also use the screen near the base of the cargo pad and left-click the button for the crate you'd like to pick up. To select the different slots of your inventory, you can either scroll the scroll wheel on your mouse or use the 1 through 0 number keys to select a specific slot. To place crates, just look at any part of the cargo pad and press E. If you don't want to place an entire stack of a resource, you can press T to split the stack in half into two stacks in your inventory. The disposal unit can be used to get rid of unwanted items. Simply select the item you'd like to get rid of, then press E while looking at the disposer. In later videos, we'll see how the disposer has some other practical purposes, and also how to retrieve resources you may have ejected by mistake. But for now, we can just use it as a space garbage can. To store large quantities of cargo on your ships, you'll want to use a cargo container. These devices consist of an internal access point and a large box on the outside of the ship where the crates are stored. To put resources into the container, press E while looking at the box-shaped slot on the right. Cargo that is stored inside will be displayed on the screen on the left. Like other screens, simply left-click on the resource you'd like to take out of the container. At the bottom of the container screen, you can see how many crates are currently stored inside, and a search button if you need to quickly find something specific. To swap from your resource inventory over to your tool inventory, press Q. Just like the resource inventory, your tool inventory has 10 slots, and you can select each slot with the scroll wheel or with the 1 through 0 keys. Notice that when one inventory is active, the other will be displayed below it, with smaller icons. That way you can always see everything you're carrying, regardless of which inventory is active. Tools and items are stored differently to how resources are stored. Instead of resting in crates on cargo pads, tools are placed on racks or in lockers. Weapon racks can be used to store weapons like the plasma rifle or tools like the repair gun. To take items from the weapon rack, press E while looking at the item. And to place an item, select it in your inventory and press E on the rack. These lockers, which must be opened first by pressing E, can be used to store items like ammo, heat sinks, or health packs. Just like the weapon rack, you take and place items from here by pressing E. Lastly are these lockers, which open up and display their contents on a screen when you approach them. They can store both weapons and smaller items. To place items in them, press E just like with the other two. But to take items from the locker, left click on the items icon on the screen. The weapon rack and both types of locker can hold up to 8 items. 
The vault is perhaps the most important storage apparatus in the game. Items stored here will be accessible from any other vault on the server. Vault access points are usually found on starter stations, and each player has a unique vault that can't be accessed by other players. Just like with the cargo container, items can be deposited into the vault by pressing E on the large slot on the right, and can be removed by left-clicking the item on the left-hand screen. A unique feature of the vault, however, is its ability to store tools and weapons, as well as resource crates. Tools in the vault are outlined with blue instead of gray, and when selected they will bring up a list of all tools of that type currently in the vault. You can select which tool you want from this list, then press confirm to close the list and return to the main vault screen. By default, the vault can only store up to 500 crates of resources at a time. The available space can be expanded by acquiring Voltron passes and inserting them into the vault. While inside, they add a number of additional slots, depending on the tier of the pass. Even using Voltron passes, there is a maximum size a vault can have, so keep that in mind when storing your resources. Crews and fleets have communal vaults, which are shared between all members of the crew or fleet. Each of these vaults also has a limit of crates, based on the number of players in the crew or fleet, which again can be expanded using Voltron passes. The tabs at the top of the vault screen will switch you between the different vaults you have access to, and in order to deposit items into any of the vaults, its tab must first be selected. The small display at the back of the vault drop slot tells you at a glance which vault you're depositing into. Finally, we have the cargo teleporter. This device combines the cargo pad with the short-range teleporter to allow transfer of cargo between ships or stations quickly and easily. Unlike the player teleporters, which can only send players to another teleporter, the cargo teleporter can send crates to any cargo pad, cargo container, any of the vaults, or even fuel tanks. To use it, first place the cargo you'd like to send on the built-in cargo pad. Then, use either the left or right screens to select the destination ship. The screen will now show every location on the ship that can hold cargo, and the name of the room that's in. A green destination represents an empty location, yellow means it's partially filled, and red indicates that the destination is completely full. Just like player teleporters, the upper display shows a map of the area around the currently selected destination. Once you've selected where you want to send your cargo, left-click the teleport button, and watch the crates disappear with a flash. If the cargo teleporter tries to send a crate to somewhere that it can't be placed, like a cargo pad that's already full, or if a crate of iron ore tries to go into a hydrogen fuel tank, the crate will remain on the teleporter's cargo pad, and can be picked back up or sent to a different destination. That's all for the first episode of this tutorial series. The next episode will cover the basics of mining, refining, hydrogen fuel, and life support systems. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future installment, leave your suggestion in a comment below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.